If we're looking at sticks and carrots, incentives and, let's say, punishments, we could say in many ways the Eastern Partnership inherently offers much more opportunity and reward. Carrots. The stick in the Eastern Partnership is more on what they could lose in terms of missed opportunities, in being left behind their neighbors. For example, visa mobility is benefiting Moldova, will benefit Georgia, but Armenia is not yet there. So in other words, disparities and differences, divisions between and among the Eastern Partnership states, based not on, not on sticks as punishment, but on sticks in terms of lost opportunities of getting the carrot. In contrast, the Eurasian Union is the polar opposite. It's based on coercion and pressure, and the stick or the club is much heavier, much more common, and much frequently used than the carrot. In fact, the carrot is probably stale and overripe in many ways, because what the Eurasian Union represents is going backwards in time to a recreation of very closed, very centralized command-style economy of, let's say, Soviet-style reintegration. So in this context, carrots and sticks are very important, but each model offers a very different, if not inherently opposite, approach. The Eastern Partnership started off as a model for the European Union to engage six key post-Soviet states. The idea from the European Union perspective was actually to stabilize the periphery of Europe. Armenia is generally pro-Russian, yet at the same time, given the diaspora, given the population's popular attitude, very pro-Western at the same time. There is not a contradiction within Armenia from these seemingly opposed positions. Moreover, Armenia is the host of the only Russian military base in the Caucasus yet is deepening ties with NATO. Armenia is a member of the Russian-led Collective Security Treaty Organization, yet Armenian peacekeepers serve in Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc. So this nature of balance is the norm for Armenia, and in many ways a continuation of negotiations with the European Union, even though it's in the Eurasian Union, is perhaps a reflection of this natural attempt to balance. By backing Russia, Armenia is in danger of losing in terms of economic effects spillover from sanctions, but more importantly, the relationship between Armenia and Russia has long been asymmetrical, uneven, unequal. And in many ways, there is a new trend where the Armenian population is beginning to challenge the terms of the relationship with Russia pushing back against the arrogance, how Russia and Putin in particular takes Armenian loyalty for granted. It's much less about a strategic partner and much more about a vassal state or a garrison state. So in other words, that trend is a accumulation of frustration. Putin's policies are actually becoming counterproductive for Russia and for the future of Russia. And this is the new opening or discrepancy. In many ways, being pro-Russian no longer means being pro-Putin. Whether it's the assassination of Russian opposition figure Boris Nemtsov, or the treatment of Kasparov, or others, civil society in Russia. So this discrepancy is very important. And it's also driven by Armenia's place in history and geography in terms of always relying on the Russian Empire or Federation, or even the Soviet system, for security, but not necessarily always swearing personal allegiance to either the Tsar, the Politburo chairman, or the so-called strongman president of Russia.